So I was working on a video on how to degree camshafts in the four valve and it occurred to me that I could probably make a video on just grinding the cam gears and the theory behind that and how that's done. So instead of making a video of how to degree cams uh, super long, I'm going to go ahead and explain how to, how to grind factory gears uh, on a four valve. I'm just going to show you on a four valve, but the principle is going to be the same. The principle is going to be the same on the 4.6 dual overhead cam uh, or single overhead cam or even on the 5.4. The principle of the relationship between this cam uh, sprocket and the cam itself is how we change the advance or retard of the camshaft. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'm going to try to explain that in this video. So we take a look at our engine here. <clears throat> This engine and most engines are gonna rotate as you look at it from the front clockwise. That means the, the crankshaft is gonna turn clockwise, which is the, all the cams are gonna turn clockwise. Uh, the primary cam gears are driven off of uh, the camshaft or the crankshaft. So if you're gonna change the relationship of the camshaft to the crankshaft, you need to grind the gears in, 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 in a way to where the camshaft is either more forward or more backwards in comparison to where these timing marks are on the uh, crank sprocket and the primary cam sprocket. And the way that you do that, I mean, I'll show some, some closer up videos of this or when, when I go and take this off and grind it, uh, I've already checked this. Uh, this exhaust is uh, 114. And so uh, the cam card uh, calls for 116. So I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna grind part of the key that goes into the keyway of the camshaft. And the idea is, since everything, if you think of it as everything is rotating uh, clockwise, you need, if you need to advance the camshaft, you need to grind the keyway in a way that moves the camshaft more forward. It keeps the, the cam, the, the sprocket in place but the camshaft moves forward or if you need to retard it you would grind the, the sprocket in a way that would allow the, the cam to be further back uh, retard and that goes for all of them that the same principle is for uh, the uh, exhaust cam on the driver side the intake cam uh, and the passenger side it's all going to be the same because they they all turn in the same direction uh, so if you think of it that way do you need the camshaft to be more forward or more advanced? And that's what we're gonna do when we grind. All right, on the engine here, I have the, I have the dial indicator set up on number six. And I do, I start with number six because, and most people will start with number six because once you get this side done, uh, you, you, pull the, you pull the pins, everything, you put the tensioner back on there and this side is done. You move over to the other side. Uh, this chain on this side sits in front of that one. So then once you're done with this one, then you can put all your covers on. But why six and why number one? Uh, well, to take a look at this diagram here, let's take a look at the 4.6 firing order. One, three, seven, two, six, five, four, eight. So almost any V-type engine, if you take the firing order and put the first set above the second set, now you'll find the companion cylinder. So when number one is at top dead center, number six is also at top dead center. Num when number three is at top dead center, number five is also at top dead center. Now only one of these is going to be firing. So one is going to be on the top of the uh, compression stroke and one is going to be on the top of the exhaust stroke. Uh, so only one of them is going to be actually firing. But that's what a companion cylinder is. So that's why we do number one and number six at the same time, because they're companion cylinders. I've removed the, the bolt and the, the washer. So we can take another look at this a little closer. And you might be asking, well, if I grind that keyway, it's gonna make the, or if I grind that key, it's gonna make the sprocket itself weaker. Uh, that key is not what holds this sprocket in place. If you look close, you can see the cam is actually recessed in there. Uh, so what actually is going to hold this sprocket to the camshaft is the washer with the pressure of the bolt uh, holding it on there. So when you grind this,
key down uh, on the on the sprocket, it doesn't uh, it doesn't affect the the structural ability of this thing to to stay in place. It's not it's not going to break this off. You can see there's a little bit of play already in this sprocket, and the idea is with the play in there, if you put the sprocket pull the sprocket this way, which is pulling that way, it moves the cam that way which is gonna advance it. If you pull the sprocket this way, uh, and that's gonna effectively push the cam that way in relation to the sprocket. So if you're gonna try to advance, if you're gonna try and advance the cam, you would grind on this side. And this is gonna go for all of them, all cams uh, that turn in a, in a clockwise rotation, which in the 4.6 and the 5.4, 5.4, it's gonna be all of them. So if you need to advance your cam, you're gonna grind on this area. If you need to retard your cam, you're gonna grind on this side of the keyway. So we take a closer look at this. To advance, you're gonna grind this side. To retard, you're gonna grind that side. The other thing you have to keep in mind is that if you grind on this keyway uh, and you don't make sure that the, the sprocket stays up against the side of it, uh, you're not going to see any difference when you when you check your uh, your degreen. So you need to somehow apply pressure, and that can be by hand, uh, or or you can have somebody hold the camshaft or whatever just to make sure that the sprocket stays up against the side that you grind it on. So I'm going to go ahead and grind on this thing and uh, see if we can get a couple degrees out of it. All right, I've actually been grinding on this a little bit uh, when I was making uh, the video uh already for degree in the doing the whole process so I, I, you can see where i've already gone off i had i had some of these dremel bits um but they weren't taking much material off of there so i went and i picked up a few new ones uh these are just a carbide cutter 9901 and a carving engraver 196 i'm not sure how this one's going to do but uh this uh carbide Graver. I'm going to start off with this one in part number 9901. I'm not sure if it'll show up or not on camera, but I drew a little line along the edge that I'm going to be grinding on for a reference to see how much material I'm, I'm going to be taking off. So that's uh, only a couple thousandths, not even a sixteenth of an inch. We'll see what that gets. All right, I have this uh, this fitting on my Dremel. You don't have to have this. In fact, you don't have to do this. Uh, you don't have to use a Dremel at all. You could you could try and file it by hand or whatever you can get in there. If you have a stone, you can get in there. Uh, I actually tried grinding on this by hand. And I'm pretty sure I've done it before. I don't know if my my uh, file has was gotten dull or what, but it, it just wasn't taking off material fast enough. So I went and got one of these new fittings and uh, I'm going to see if we can take some material off of here. And Don't forget your iPro. If you're going to be doing any kind of grinding with power tools, I highly recommend iPro. See how that fits. Feels like it's got a little bit more play in there. Okay, as per ARP instructions. Uh, a side note, these, the factory bolts on these are, are torqued to yield uh, and shouldn't be reused. I know some people reuse them and they torque them like 100 foot pounds, but uh, I'm going to use these ARP bolts, which are reusable and hardened, but uh, they recommend that you use the ARP uh, Molly Lube. And you put this on the, the threads. 
in the bottom of the headboard, but you do not put it right there. So now that I got started, I'm gonna put a little bit on the bottom side of the bolt head. So if you look closely, we have a lot of play in here, but we want to make sure that the slack is taken out of it by applying some pressure. And I'm going to try this by hand and see if it works. So I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold the, the crankshaft that way as I tighten this down. One fifty eight. Seventy three. One fifty eight plus seventy three. Equals 231 divided by 2. 115.5 on a 1, 116 center line. That's within a half a degree. I'm going to call that good.